Well, I love this question because it enables me to uh, talk about the rich history of CT Corporation and uh, all the companies, the wonderful companies that, we, that we've helped over the years. We service 75% of the top Fortune 1000 companies in the world. And there's been really kind of four golden rules or principles of, of business that, that kind of distinguish between a successful business and one that kind of fizzles out. Um, and those principles are one, uh, have a good trusted advisor core around you, attorneys and, and, uh, and accountants. Two, educate yourself on the key steps of how to run a healthy business and understanding kind of what you do know, what you need to know, and what you don't know, so that you can have good communication with your trusted advisors. And then three, have your, your core principles laid out at the beginning and keep those core principles for the remainder of your, of your company. It could be that you want to be, uh, you know, make the best, safest electricity or electrical cell, uh, but that's your core. And then four, maintain, re regardless of the fact that, that, that the economy is going to change, markets change, dynamics change, uh, look at your business and the health of your business as a long-term investment, not what's going to happen this next quarter or what am I doing for this next year, but keep your principles and, and, and have those for the life of the business and think long-term. Uh, those are the most successful businesses that we've seen over the last 122, 122 years. A corporation is uh, kind of the milestone of, of getting into business. It's, it's a, a big sense of pride. I mean, we see companies that have been around for 30 years, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, even large businesses that still have their original charter uh, docks up on the wall. Um, it's, it's kind of the, the, the great push off the cliff to say, you are a business owner, you're in this. Uh, and, and also, now that's the psychology of it, but then also there's the, the, the concept of to be able to grow your business and be able to get contracts and put bids in on, on, on offers, um, to, to uh, get lending and there's loan programs and there's just kind of jurisdictional requirements that you need to have uh, an incorporation to, to actually become a part of that. So CT Corporation uh, can, can act as a, a registered agent for you and, and, and the reason that you need to, be, to have a registered agent in the state is that you're not necessarily physically located in that state. So CT Corporation will act as your physical presence in that state uh, so that you can do interstate commerce. Even though your offices are located in let's say New York City or New Jersey, you can offer business businesses and, and, and sell things in other states like Illinois, California, Texas. Uh, so that's the concept of, of acting as registered agent for your business. The burden is much greater than it was uh, you know, some hundred years ago where it was hard to get in business but very easy to operate. Um, now it's, it's easy to get in business but much harder to operate. What happens if you don't stay on top of your things like annual reports and all of your local licenses? You, you fall out of good, what's called good standing with the states. And that just creates kind of a, a domino effect of all of your contracts that you sign with vendors, your insurance company, your payroll companies, um, it, it just your lenders, all of these types of business operations that you're going to contract in uh, or with they're all going to require that you're, you're operating your business correctly, which means that you're in good standing in all these states, these different states that you operate in, and that you're not doing business in states that you know, you, you, you're, you're actually doing business in, but you're not registered to do business in. Um, that creates just such a, a liability for you, and it looks like you're, you're, you're not doing business in the proper way. I think James Dill, when he started CT Corporation 122 years ago, did that was just kind of those four golden rules. And you know, I, I, he was kind of the godfather of those four golden rules. But what he did was he, he found an opportunity. He focused on that opportunity. It happened to be modernizing corporate law. But he, um, 
he stuck with those four golden rules that I, I discussed earlier, that he had trusted advisors around him. He had a vision of what he wanted to do with his business. And then he maintained those core principles in his business. No matter what the, what the business went through, he maintained those core principles. Um, and he looked to, to the concept that I'm going to be doing this for the next, maybe in perpetuity. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll you know, be the, 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 the GE. And he did. And again, y you have to have those principles or you cannot, uh, you cannot maintain uh, the business. And you know, he took his core principles and pushed it along to all of his employees and made sure that they were running the business as he saw it. Um, and so now here we are 122 years later with experts uh, in, in, the, in the industry and with expert knowledge and you know we operate in kind of his likeness no different than General Electric operates in Thomas Edison's likeness right and his principles so um, that's what I've, I've seen successful businesses that have, have passed the test of time they, they held to that and CT Corporation did